Hey guys, this is Mr. Kim, and today in this video, I'm going to talk to you guys about the AP Calculus exam score breakdown. Uh, what to sort of do to get a four or five, um, because certainly you don't need to be perfect, have like 100% on this exam to get a five. Um, the ultimate goal is for you guys to do well on this exam, right? And to do well on this exam, you need to understand how the score system works, what the grading policy is, um, because you, when you understand not just the content material, but how the college board like grades and stuff, it really helps you to get a better score because you're just giving them what they really, you know, what they want from you. Okay, so pretty much all the information that I have on the slide is from the internet. I just kind of Google searched the calc exam scores breakdown. And so I wanna give you guys as to sort of, first of all, the categories in which, what type of scores you need to get in order to get an AP score of, let's say, four or five. So we really want to highlight on this right here, like, you guys don't want a three, two, or one. I mean, this is just complete garbage. Like, you don't want any of this uh, because the colleges, usually they will not accept a credit score or anything that's below a four. Um, if you got a four, usually that what they will do is they will probably give you a credit score, and so you don't you can actually get up to let, uh, go up to the next level, which is calc two. Um, if you get a five, there's there's no there's no doubt. But some colleges might not accept a four, so it is a good idea to always be shooting for the star, shoot for the five. And if you notice, to get a five, you need to get a score of at least sixty eight or above. And a hundred and eight is the highest score or composite scores that you can get on an AP exam, or at least for an AP calc exam. 68 is about like halfway, about 108. If you take the 108 and divide that by two, you actually get a 54. So if you actually get like, let's say, get a 50% on this exam, you actually do end up with a four, which is quite nice, which means you pretty much have to get like only half of the test right in order to get, you know, some sort of a college credit. And on this, right here on the side i'm going to show you oh why can't this work again? there we go right uh, so this is a website that i found it's actually quite neat i'm going to share the link with you guys on the um the the channel section this allows you to calculate an ap score exam for calculus given let's say what your composite scores will be so i just google searched ap calc exam score calculator and this is what came up um, like right on like the first Google search link. The first part is the multiple choice and they will give you 45 questions in total. And you will have six free response questions. So let's say that you kind of like ace the, the first multiple choice section and you got a 45 out of a 45. You already end up with a three. Like predicted AP score here would be a three and that's like total composite score of 54 out of 108. Now, of course, this doesn't really coincide with what the chart shows because the chart says if I get a 54, I should be ending up with a score of five. I mean, I'm a score of four. Um, but if on the multiple choice section, you get, you know, at least like a 54, which means you're getting every question right on the multiple choice, uh, then you pretty much are guaranteed to have a three or a four, depending on how the curve is going to roll. But most of your points will come from the free, free response question. So even if you like play around with this, you know, grid just a little bit, let's say that you, you know, you just get even half of this, right? Like I'm just gonna put like, trying to, I'm gonna try to put the little tabs on the middle section here. You still end up with a five if you get like a perfect score of multiple choice and just half of the open-ended questions, right? Even if I were to drag this down the multiple choice question to maybe like, I don't know, down to like I don't know, 27, you still get a four. So half of the free response, half of the multiple choice get right. You know, there you go. You get, you got to predict the score of it, like, you know, of it, uh, four. Okay. So I hope that this kind of gives you an idea as to kind of realize that you don't really need to get a perfect, perfect score. Like you don't need to be able to understand every single question. Then quite honestly, like you won't. And I don't either. Some of the questions are quite vague. It's really, you know, you're, it's really rare that in high school students will get a perfect, perfect score on an AP exam. But that doesn't mean that that's the one only requirement to get a five. Like, you just need to get above 68 or about maybe 70%. You need to know about just about 70% of what's on the test and you will get a five. 
that's determined as, oh, yeah, you will pass for this course. All right. And uh, here's a time breakdown. Um, first, you will, when you take the first uh, AP exam, the first thing you will do is you will sit down, you will get ready, and you, they will be giving you multiple sections of the test. The first section is the multiple choice. Uh, there are, is a part A and part B. There are 45 questions in total, like I said. So give or take, you will earn one point for each question you get right. And there are actually no penalties for guessing a question wrong. So what you always must do is to make sure that you, e you guess. Even if you don't know something, you must guess and answer every question. because there's no penalty for guessing. And luckily, let's say you guessed it and you guessed it right, then you know higher chance of you getting a perfect score. So make sure there's no blanks on the Scantron. Part A are 30 questions in 60 minutes and there's no calculators allowed, which means that you must bring your TI-84 on the test or the school might provide you with one, depending on where you are. Uh, for these 30 questions, mostly you will be asked to take derivatives. You will be asked to do um, like simple derivatives and all these like rules that you must remember. Uh, but for part B, you need to be very fluent in how to do integrations and derivatives on a calculator, which I'll also show you on the next couple of a set of videos. It's about worth 50% of your total score. So these 45 questions that you will answer of the multiple choice, um, let's say that you get like 45 questions all of it right then that's already getting 50 percent of your test like your scores right then maybe you need to only answer about 20 percent more correctly to in order for you to get a five just to give you a little bit of an idea it's timed so you need to watch out for your time the first part will give you an hour and after this point you will probably be exhausted because it's an hour-long test but this AP exam is going to be long, so you got to get used to it. This is a like a two hour and a half long test. 60 minutes plus 45 means you're just spending about one hour and 45 minutes on multiple sections alone. Then they'll give, give you guys probably a break in between. And then you will move into the open-ended sections, the free response questions, which is actually very, very crucial. Um, here's a rundown, six questions in total. So that doesn't seem like much, but every questions are very, very elaborate. One hour and 30 minutes long. So you do the math, one hour and 45 minutes for the multiple choice, you take a little break, and then you go right back at it about one hour and 30 minutes. In total, you'll be spending about four hours, just like an SAT, on this entire length of the exam. So part A are two questions and there are 30 minutes in total. And this calculator is required. Like you need to use a the calculator. They will give you like decimals and they will give you like these crazy functions that you really won't be able to do by hand. Then you have part B four questions and that's 60 minutes and there's no calculator allowed. If you do the math, two questions for 30 minutes, four questions for 60 minutes, that means only one question per 15 minutes on average is pretty much okay. That is actually what you wanna do for the three response questions. Because if you spend anything more than that, then you're probably running out of time. And this is the part where you can't just guess. You gotta watch out for the time for this one um, as much as possible. You go, you wanna put a little bit more emphasis on the time. Like watch out for the time. Again, worth 50% of your score. And the total composite score for this is 54 points. So you get nine points per question. So six, six times nine, because six questions, nine points, and you get 54 plus the 45 composite scores for your multiple choice, that comes up to be about 99 points overall. Uh, that's why they generally kind of say that this is about worth 50%, that's worth about 50% of your total AP scores. So just keep that in mind whenever you guys are solving for this. Okay. Also, um, there are the simple derivatives in which you must want to remember. Like if you want to have yourself a little bit of a, like a um, cheat sheet of all the derivatives, the derivative rules, integration rules. You should probably do that be right before you do your exam. Um, trig derivatives, I usually tend to forget a lot of these. Uh, it's really good idea to kind of understand these last four and memorize them. These two are often used and you must remember, this is like 100% guarantee that you will probably see these. These, not so much, but you still want to remember them somehow. And remember, you can't really bring 
anything with you other than maybe your graphing calculator and even a bottle of water. I don't know if it's allowed, but you don't want to lose points because you didn't remember these simple rules. Derivative of natural log of X is one over X. Like these things, trying to conceptually explain to them, it's going to be a hassle. So it's better for you to just memorize it. And also derivative of E to the X is just E to the X. That's one of those things where like, it just makes no sense. Like if you look at it, but it will make sense if you kind of do the proofs and things like that. And at this point, we don't really have time to kind of go over the content. So you just want to memorize these. Um, there are, I think maybe there are a couple more, but like the, the simple derivative rules, like the product rule, the quotient rule, these things I will go over with you guys um, on the videos that when I'm explaining the questions, but you definitely do want to remember them no matter what, because if you don't know how to do chain rules, that's another good one. Like these are vital, these are essential. What you have been taught for over a year, like you're no, no calculator teacher, not calculator, calculus teachers around the world, they won't be able to teach you calculus without these three things. Okay, so make sure you know that. Oh, also there's power rule. I think these are the main four and the rest of them, you don't really have to know them, but these four you must know. All right, so that is the breakdown of the scores. And in the next several videos, I'm going to cut down the video now and um, start going over some questions.